What is this World War II era dark glasses with fixed side guards? A friend found this among her grandfather's things, and I can't find anything exactly like it online. Most guarded goggles have hinged side guards. Welding goggles usually have straps or hoods. And this could be for sand or other debris. I'm even wondering if this could have been issued to soldiers tasked to view A-bomb tests. Apparently, there are no identifying markings on it. They're dark, but not as much as welding glasses. Any idea what it is for? It's a mid-19th century cinder goggles with the original leather case. Early railroad cars did not have windows, and some passengers were lucky to have a cover overhead. Smoke and debris flew into their faces and eyes. Flying cinders caused more than a few clothing fires as well. As railways expanded in the 1840s, there was a growing eyewear trend toward mass-produced cinder glasses. Initially, only engineers wore them. Later, they filtered back to the various classes of passenger cars. They were sometimes worn as sunglasses, and several photographs exist of Civil War soldiers wearing them. What is this metal thing attached to the wall next to the front door of an old residential building? It's about 15 inches long and about 10 feet above the ground. It's been a mystery to us since we moved in a few years ago. Does anyone know anything about it? It's for an old Victorian doorbell attached by wire and pulleys, probably from the front door down to the dining room. You can actually see the filled out hole in the door where it went through. The horizontal shaft attaches to the grip, vertical to a wire going through the door where the bell is attached. These doorbells were also used to call servants in a Victorian household. There may have been up to seven or eight bells in a Victorian mansion to call servants to a particular room. I found this in the kitchen section in a thrift store, but I thought it looked more like a jewelry box type of thing. It's ceramic and metal about 10 inches wide, four inches high, and six inches front to back. There is a handle at the back. It's fairly lightweight, and from the mark on the underside, possibly mid-century, I don't know what the handle on the backside is for, and it would hold about six cups of liquid. Any ideas? It's a German Art Deco cookie jar from circa 1930. While used to store actual cookies or biscuits, they are sometimes employed to store other edible items like candy or dog treats, or non-edible items like currency in the manner of a piggy bank. What is this metal thing attached to a glass jar found in my late grandpa's barn? The top is all metal, and there are no words on any of it. The switch slides a plate with a hole over from one hole to another, but those holes don't connect in any way to the top of the metal. The glass jar does have a problematic old caricature of a Mexican person, but it could maybe just be an old salsa jar, and the two pieces are unrelated, but the metal part does screw onto it. Any ideas? It's a 1930s wall mount coffee dispenser. It has a slide knob to dispense measured ground coffee. The mounting bracket screws to the cabinet, and the nib on the dispensers lift on and off to unscrew the jar and refill it. What is this metal plunger-looking thing on a wall next to a washboard, found in Cracker Barrel? There was quite a debate between friends since we entered the place. It's around 32 inches long, 9 inches wide, and made out of metal and wood. Any ideas? That's an antique washing plunger from the late to early 20th century. You would work it like a toilet plunger in a tub with the clothes and soap. The tin cone-shaped head has internal agitators that would have moved the clothing through the wash tub. I guess this is faster than beating clothes on a rock. What is this thing in a museum? It has a metal container with what appears to be a pressure gauge coming out the top. There is also a metal rod on the left that can be raised and lowered. The writing on the pressure gauge reads Maschinen- u Armaturenfabrik Borm. C. Louis Strube, Aktiengesellschaft Magdeburg Buchau. And number one, 44768. It appears to be pretty old, and I'm unsure of the origin. It is around one and a half feet tall, and the whole thing is made of metal. Any ideas are appreciated. It's a steam digester the forerunner of the pressure cooker, and of the steam engine. It's also called a Pappen's pot, or a pressure tank. 
It was invented in 1679 by Denis Papin, a French physicist, mathematician, inventor, and professor at the University of Marburg in Germany. The lever is a pump to increase pressure, and there should be a hold where a thermometer can be inserted to show the increase in temperature as pressure is increased. It can also be heated from below with a Bunsen burner. What is this thing about 3.5 feet tall and heavier than it looks? It's made of some type of metal and is at least plated with bronze. The top piece is strangely curved and there is a ship embellishing it. I haven't done any searches on it because I can't even guess what this is or what it's used for. There is a small hole in the inside of the curved piece on the top and the metal seems to be darker around it, which may suggest that another piece goes into it. I really appreciate any help you can provide. It's a Victorian solid cast brass fishbowl stand made in England circa 1880. It was most likely for a round fishbowl or aquarium, but it also possibly held a terrarium. The fishbowl sits in a framework with openwork decoration depicting a sailing vessel at sea. I found this old thing in a garage. It's pretty heavy, maybe lead. It looks like a weird torpedo and was probably used in a war, but not entirely sure. It's a little broken and faded, so I can't give much more information. Any ideas? It's a World War II US Mark 23 practice bomb and the center channel was originally filled with red phosphorus. This was a standard piece of World War II US equipment that was used for low altitude or dive bombing practice by US Army Air Forces. This bomb cannot go off. It's made to be actually reused over and over and dropped multiple times. So it is completely inert and harmless to handle. You load this on your plane, probably eight on a rack, and it would mark where you actually dropped it. These are actually fairly common and people seem to find them in the garage because they were a pretty common surplus store item in the 50s and 60s. My brother and I had eight of these when we were little in the 70s. We would put a hula hoop in the yard and see who could hit the center from across the yard. I visited an old gold mine in Alaska, USA. This item was in the museum and everyone was stumped by it. The wings are made out of wood and the spikes are metal. There were a lot of tools in the museum, not necessarily related to gold mining. They called it a museum, but it was more like a shed with a bunch of tools. Can you help us identify this thing? Please tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.